Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and just uh, subscribe to this channel here if you'd like. Um, I will be hoping, hopefully getting through all of uh, Central within the next couple of weeks. So uh, if you would like to continue to receive updates and, and see the entirety of Central uh, demoed out here, go ahead and just hit subscribe underneath the channel. So today's topic is actually a two-part topic. It's going to be uh, managing users within your Central account. Um, so one of the benefits of Central compared to other remote access solutions out there is that you do have the unlimited number of users who can access the computers in your account. Um, so as we do place very strict or uh, potentially granular permissions on any user or group of users, I highly recommend uh, you know sending over a user invitation to anyone and everyone who will ultimately be using Central within your environment. So uh, to, you, to get started with users, we're going to move over to the user section on the left-hand column and select Manage. Uh, here we're brought to a list of existing users and groups, and as well as their statuses. So here you can see uh, active, disabled, or pending, uh, which means that they haven't yet accepted their invitation. Users and user groups are very similar in structure as computers and computer groups. We have the ability to set permission for users on an individual level or as a group. So to best understand the user section, I'm going to go ahead and start with creating user groups before we send out any invitations. To add a new group, click on Add User Group at the top of the page. Here, we are prompted to enter a group name, or we can extend the names of our computer groups into user groups. This is your preference, but for most cases I recommend keeping user groups and computer groups separate. For example, I may have uh, five computer groups that I've named after my five office locations. However, I may specify my user groups based on department, title, or access level, not necessarily where they are physically located. In this example, let's pretend I'm setting up three different types of users. Those in the IT department, those in the marketing department, and those in sales. I'm going to simply add these in the group name section and click Add. You can now see I've added my three user groups based on the department the user works in. I will now specify the permissions the group will apply to any user I invite as part of that group. Let's start with IT. If I click on Edit Permissions next to the group name, I'm brought to the selection page. Permissions range anywhere from management capabilities within Central to viewable data to computers or groups of computers one can access. For my IT group, I'm going to select Grant All Permissions, which automatically selects All Access, and click Save at the bottom. Next, I'm going to set my permissions for users in the Marketing Department. By clicking Edit Permissions next to the Marketing group, I will keep Grant All Permissions unchecked and select the ability to run reports through Central, view inventory data, log tickets, and save their credentials. Marketing professionals can access only the Boston computers in the account, but will see a simplified interface when they log in and start a remote control session. Finally, I will granularly set the sales group with the least amount of permissions. In fact, I'm not going to allow my sales reps to do anything in Central apart from remote control their computers. But how would I do this when selecting computers on the group level? The answer is I don't make this change here, but rather in the individual invitation itself. Therefore, I'm going to select Specify the groups and computers the selected user can access, but not select any computers at this point. Clicking Save at the bottom, I have successfully configured my computer groups.